Welcome everyone. Uh, today's topic of discussion is the comparative advantage theory of international trade. The theory was given by David Ricardo in his book Principle of Political Economy and Taxation in the year 1817. Uh, this theory is a development over the absolute advantage theory uh, of international trade given by Adam Smith. In this lecture, I shall discuss the comparative advantage theory of international trade and I will also show you the gains from trade of the countries who involve in international trade based on the law of comparative advantage. And uh, I expect that after the end of this lecture, learners will be able to answer how two countries can involve in gainful trade between them even if one has absolute advantage in the production of both the commodities say x and y good and the other nation has absolute disadvantage in the production of both the commodities uh, before going to the theory of competitive advantage let us recall the theory of absolute advantage given by adam smith according to the law of absolute advantage if country a has an absolute advantage over another country b in the production of one commodity say x but a has an absolute disadvantage with respect to the other country b in producing a second commodity say y at the same time country b has also the absolute advantage over country a in the production of y good and an absolute disadvantage in the production of x good then there exists a possibility of gainful trade under such situation if A specializes in the production of X good and imports Y from country B and simultaneously if B specializes in the production of Y and imports X good from country A then both country will gain from international trade. This is what is the view of Adam Smith's theory of international trade. But question arises uh, what will happen if country A has absolute advantage in the border commodities or whether the trade will be beneficial for B if B has absolute disadvantage in the production of both the goods X and Y. So the answer is given by David Ricardo in his competitive advantage theory of international trade. So uh, let us come to the competitive advantage theory. Uh, here we assume a two countries to commodities model. The two countries are A and B and the two commodities are X and Y. Further, we assume that A has absolute advantage over country B in the production of both the commodities X and Y. And on the other hand, country B has absolute disadvantage than country A in the production of both the commodities. Under this situation, according to David Ricardo, there is a scope for gainful international trade between A and B. The law says that uh, the country a will gain by specializing in the production and export of that commodity in which it has comparative advantage and country B will also gain by specializing in the production and export of that commodity in which it has less comparative disadvantage. This chart will give you a clear picture about how the comparative advantage theory works. Here uh, country A has absolute advantage over country B in the production of both goods X and why and on the other hand country b has absolute disadvantage than country a in the production of both the goods x and y uh, but points to note that uh, a has comparative advantage in the production of x as compared to y good at the same time b has less comparative disadvantage in the production of y good than x good under this situation a will specialize in the production of x good and export some amount of x to country b and conversely b will specialize in the production of y good and export some amount of y to country a in this way based on the law of competitive advantage uh, both country can involve in gainful trade between them let us see all this uh, with the help of a numerical example so in this table you see that India can produce 6 units of wheat by using 1 labor hour and 4 units of cloth with 1 labor hour. On the other hand, England can produce 1 unit of wheat and 2 units cloth by using 1 labor hour in each good. 
uh, here we assume that all labor units are homogeneous. Let us uh, draw some points from this uh, numerical example. First, India has absolute advantage over England in both wheat and cloth. Then, the absolute advantage of India over England in the production of wheat is 6 is to 1 and in the cloth 4 is to 2 or 2 is to 1. Uh, here, 6 is to 1 is greater than 2 is to 1 and it indicates that India has uh, comparative advantage in wheat production than in cloth. So uh, according to the law of competitive advantage, India will specialize in the production and export of wheat. Similarly, England has uh, less absolute advantage or absolute disadvantage over India in the production of both wheat and cloth. Absolute advantage of England over India in the production of wheat is 1 is to 6 and in the production of cloth 2 is to 4 or 1 is to 2. So here uh, 1 is to 6 is less than 1 is to 2 and it indicates that England has comparative advantage or uh, we can say less disadvantage in the production of cloth. So according to the law of comparative advantage, England will specialize in the production and export of cloth. And if trade between India and England occurs uh, in this way, uh, then the both the country will gain from international trade. Now let us see the gains from trade for both India and England after the involvement of international trade. First we will see the gains from trade for India. By exporting one unit of wheat to England, uh, India will get two units of cloth, uh, which is more than what she gets in the domestic market. And this is obviously a gainful situation for India. Because in the domestic market, India would have got only uh, 0.66 units of cloth for one unit of wheat. So, getting two units of cloth from England by paying or exporting one unit of wheat is a gainful situation for India. And the trade will remain gainful for India if and only if uh, she can get more than 0.66 units of cloth from England by exporting one unit of wheat. Uh, let us see what is the gain from trade for England. By exporting two units of cloth to India, England will get uh, more than one unit of wheat from India. Because uh, India is offering one unit of wheat just for 0.66 units of cloth. So, uh, getting more than one unit of wheat from India only by paying two units of cloth is a gainful situation for England. Because uh, by paying two units of cloth, uh, England would have got only one unit of wheat in its home market. So this is a gainful situation for England also. And the important thing is that the trade will be beneficial for England also. Uh, if and only if she gets uh, one unit of wheat from India by paying less than two units of cloth. In this diagram, the line OI is drawn uh, based on the domestic barter ratio between wheat and cloth in India. Uh, so this is the offer curve of India because uh, India is offering one unit of wheat for uh, 0.66 units of cloth. On the other hand, the line OE is drawn based on the domestic barter ratio between wheat and cloth in England. Uh, this is the offer curve of England which indicates that England offers uh, two units of cloths for one unit of wheat. The trade between India and England uh, will be mutually beneficial if trade occurs at any terms of trade uh, between the two offer curves OI and OE. Like the Adam Smith's theory of absolute advantage, Ricardo's comparative advantage theory of international trade is also criticized under some grounds. Uh, as for example, the theory assumes uh, labor as the only factor of production and cost of production is measured only in terms of labor cost. Also, the theory assumes uh, that all the labor units are homogeneous and labor is immobile among nations. But uh, in reality, labor is not the only factor of production and it is not possible to measure the total production cost only in terms of labor cost. Uh, besides, uh, all labor units uh, cannot be homogeneous in reality. 
and they are found to be mobile among nations. Uh, in addition, the assumption of two countries, two commodities model is unrealistic and it cannot be applied in real world. Uh, another important point is uh, that uh, this theory neglects the transportation cost. But uh, in practice, the transportation cost does matter in the export and import of commodities between nations. Uh, sometimes uh, it is found that many countries try to achieve self-reliance in the production of some commodities though the countries are less efficient in that line of production. So when self-reliance is the prime objective of the countries, the competitive advantage theory becomes irrelevant. But despite of this uh, criticism, uh, the competitive advantage theory is still one of the important theories of international trade. And in practical, many countries are found involving in international trade based on the law of competitive advantage. I hope you get an idea of the competitive advantage theory of David Ricardo and thank you for watching this video.